please welcome our first speaker. He's often found in an HL math class, the badminton court, or on the soccer field. He's here to talk about third culture kids and where their hometown truly is. Please welcome Shante Park with a third culture kids hometown. Hello, Strasvice. Hello, and Saudi Cup. I've been exposed to all four of these languages throughout my whole life. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I was born in Seoul, South Korea in 1999, and just after four short years, my family and I moved to Moscow, Russia, where I attended my first school. After spending there for five and a half years, I moved to a junior boarding school in the state of New Hampshire, in the United States. And finally, here I am in my fourth year at ISB at Bangkok, Thailand. Like many of you, I've been moving around a lot, so I never had a place that I could call home. In fact, when I go to the US, people think of me as a nerdy Korean. When I'm in Russia, they think I'm from the other part of Korea. When I'm in Thailand, they think I'm some kind of a K-pop representative. <laughs> but all jokes aside, when I'm even in my own country, sometimes I didn't feel Korean. So the question is this, where is my hometown? You see, I have a Korean passport and I'm 100% Korean blooded. It's just that Korea was merely just the place I went to visit my grandparents for free money, just to attend stereotypical SAT camps to keep up with other Koreans. Like, like that genius son, is he here? Uh, he might be at home studying. <laughs> See, Korea was merely just the place I went because of my nationality. And today, I'm here to tell you two of my first experiences in Russia and in the United States that have helped me find out where my hometown was and forever will be. My first story begins in Moscow, Russia, and a lot of people ask me how it was to live there. And my answer is simple. It's cold. <laughs> of course, I'm referring to the weather, but I did have a different kind of a cold experience. The year is 2003, when my family and I visited the Kremlin and the Red Square just to get a taste of how it was to live there. And after a long tour and a lot of walking, we were tired and hungry. So we went out to the street, and we found a street vendor that sold bread. So my parents walked over and asked in English how much it was for the bread. But the lady gave a very annoyed look, turned around, and said this. <laughs> Wait, what? Fortunately enough, my father was fluent in Russian, so I'd expected him to reply back. But he didn't. He just turned around and moved on. So, I know I was just four years old, but I was smart enough to know there was something going on. So I had to ask him what she said. And he told me that phrase that she said directly translates to this. This bread is not for Asians. Now, I don't know why she said this. Like I said, I was just four years old. But I was smart enough to know what she did. And to this very day, I remember this story very clearly. My second story begins in a beautiful town named Canaan in the state of New Hampshire, where I lived for five, two years, I think. And it's an all-boy junior boarding school. And because it's an all-boys school, there were occasional fights, jokes thrown at, thrown at each other, and just boys being boys. And just for information, I was the smallest boy in school. Now, living halfway across the world wasn't easy. <laughs> I miss Korean food. So every summer and winter, winter break, I brought these boxes of instant Korean food. And to Koreans, the, these are absolutely amazing. But to others, sometimes kimchi is known to be a bit stinky. So I was ready to cook these instant Korean food in the common room where they had a microwave. But at the same time, there was this doormate Let's call him Chris for anonymous reasons. He didn't like the smell of the kimchi. So I told him not to worry about it. I was just going to cook it, take it to my room. It's nothing he needs to worry about. But as soon as I took a step outside to grab my utensils, and when I came back, 
I found my kimchi thrown in the trash. Now, I had two problems with it. First of all, he didn't ask. Second, I mean, it's my kimchi. I went halfway across the world for that, and he just tossed it in the trash. So I could just remain calm and move on. Or I could stand up for myself and fight. And that day, I chose to stand up for myself. Now, remember when I told you I was the smallest boy in school? Well, let me introduce you to Chris. <laughs> he was six feet three in height, probably weighed like 200 pounds. I don't know what I was thinking that day, but long story short, I literally got the kimchi slapped out of me. <laughs> As you can tell by now, I am a third culture kid, or TCK for abbreviation. A TCK, according to Ted Ward, a famous sociologist, is a person who spends significant part of their developmental years outside of their parents' culture. Now, if we oblige by that definition, most of us here today are third culture kids. To name a few famous people, there is the President of the United States, Barack Obama, as well as one of the greatest basketball players to ever play in the NBA, Kobe Bryant. Some benefits about third culture kids is that they're four times as likely to earn a bachelor's degree than a normal person. Also, 90% of third culture kids feel like they can understand other cultures better than an average American. However, 90% of third culture kids feel like they're out of sync wherever they go. And this leads to a prominent illness within TCKs, such as depression. Judging by my stories, I've been faced many stereotypes and pointed out my differences. But I don't consider them as negatives. In fact, I consider them as positives. Because all I did was, I just brought a piece of Korea to Russia and America. I represented my nationality, my race in Russia. I brought Korean food, Korean culture to America. And in the same way, Russia and America has taught me so much of their culture that I bring back to Korea and really wherever I go. And I have no hard feelings for Russia, nor Chris. I mean, Russia is the place of my youth, it's where I grew up, and I love the place. And Chris, well, I was the guy on the left. As you can see, we became very close friends. <laughs> so the question comes back to this. Where is the third culture kid's hometown? TCKs have a struggle in answering this question because they're always looking for that one designated home that they never had. In fact, they answer this question with another question that pretty much means the same thing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that third culture kids have a privilege, a privilege that no other kids have, and that is the ability to call themselves the third citizens of the world. Thank you. <laughs>